so the title of today's message is a word to the violent. Uh, a word to the violent, to those that indulge in violence, to those who have chosen to be violent, to commit violence as a way of life. Um, we have a word for them today. Um, I'd say that the Lord has a word for you today. If we look at the Psalms, the Psalmist, if we look at the Psalms and we look at Psalm 55, it'll be posted up here in the chat. Um, Psalm 55, verse 15. Um, it says, let death steal over them. Okay, Again, this is not Pastor Marcos. It is not any of the ministers and priests and imams and rabbis, etc., 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 that are preaching a message like this today. This is scripture. This is, and by the way, it's the same. And I can I can speak for Abrahamic religions and Abrahamic scripture. It is the same across the board. Let death steal over them, let them go down to show, right? To show or to hell, alive. Listen to what it says in Psalms. Let them go down there alive, meaning that they could feel everything that will happen to them. For evil is in their dwelling place. Evil is in their heart. We or I have spoken in the past, and all of you have heard and, and learned from um, the fact that there are things called self-defense. There is something called killing, right, which is not something that was even premeditated or thought of, but it happens. You know, for example, driving down the street, somebody comes running into the street, you hit them with the car, they die, right? Happens every day. This is not what we're talking about here, right? And I want, I want us to get this straight. This is not what we're talking about here. We're talking about violence. We're talking about people who indulge in violence. We, we, we're talking about people who seek it out. We're talking about premeditation. And it's gotten to the point where we know that we're constantly preaching peace and we're constantly preaching for God to have mercy on people. And we'll continue to preach that message because it is God's message. Grace and peace is God's message through his son, Jesus Christ. But sometimes it gets to the point where we're going to have to say, God, do what you do. I'm going to say it again. We have to get to that point where we say, God, do what you do. And I can tell you right now that God is not happy where we are in terms of our city, our state, our country. I'm not even going to include the world, just us, our city, our states, our communities, the, the amount of violence, the upkick in gun violence, the, 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 the just the, the, the gangs fighting each other and, 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 and killing everybody but themselves. I mean, the whole thing. We're tired. I'm going to tell you right now, we are tired, but I also know that God is not happy. God is not happy. And so we, we constantly pray and we pray and we pray for mercy and that, you know what I mean? But sometimes, you know what I mean? You got to just go ahead and repeat what the psalmist said and let death steal over them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if it's uncomfortable for some people. I understand. I understand that we believe in redemption. I understand all that. And there will be redemption for those that decide to turn from their evil ways. But for those of, that are going to continue to terrorize our communities, let death steal over them. You see, if you look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 11, 
even back then, right? The beginning of time, the earth was corrupt. It was corrupt in God's sight, it says. And the earth was filled with violence. So this is not new. This is not new. So it's interesting sometimes when you when you when you hear people talking about, oh my God, this must be the end of the, you know, the end of the world. Uh, it's never been like this. Well, that's because you never lived through the 60s. <laughs> that's because you didn't live through the 70s. That's because you didn't live with us through the 80s <laughs> when we had not only gun violence and just you know a, a big up kick in homicide, but we had uh, uh, the AIDS uh, a, a pandemic and we had uh, what else did we have? Crack. <laughs> All right, some of you weren't alive, but for those of us who were, the 80s felt like it was the end of the world. We're even even now, even now with what we're going through, we're not at the level of of <laughs> of the 80s. However, we're heading there. We're not careful. If we don't, if we don't pray. And if our legislature and politicians and governance does not put their foot down and say enough is enough. Do you understand how crazy it is that, that, that the people that are committing crimes and killing other people are people that have went to jail and because of certain legislatures, they would just let go They've, they they got priors. They have they have these long lists of crimes that they've already committed, and yet we've decided to be soft on crime. That has never worked. It didn't work in the Bible times, and it's not going to work today. Again, in Genesis six eleven, it says the earth was corrupt in God's sight and the earth was filled with violence. Well, guess what, everybody? The earth continues to be corrupt in God's sight. Ain't that something? And it continues to be filled with violence even today. So, so what I'm trying to say is there's no reason to be surprised, but there is a reason to feel hurt. It, there's a reason that 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 you know that we 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 must feel hurt. We must feel like what is going on? Why can't we get it together? Why can't we control those that are committed to living violent lives, to destroy not only uh, an individual, but when you when you destroy an individual, as we have seen in uh, Uvalde, Texas as we have seen in Buffalo, as we have seen on our streets when an 11 year old beautiful little girl was killed by you know, kids on a, on, on a little motorcycle, moped, whatever, just shooting randomly. I mean, what's going on? This lack of, of seeing the sanctity of life. And, and when you destroy these, these kids or when you destroy anybody, an, an older person, who gets shot up or beat up or killed simply because there's some sort of gang initiation. Screw that, man. Let death steal over them, as the psalmist said. It's tiring. It's tiring that our kids cannot play in, in, in parks. It's tiring that, you know, people can't go to the beaches without thinking that something may happen. It's tiring that people can't walk the streets. We cannot and we must not let them take over. And we won't. And we won't because God is with us. God is with us. Parents are not the fools of few. Grandparents, parents... You're not supposed to feel uh, that when your child leaves your home to go to school or to, to go to the park or whatever, that there's a chance that they may not come home. What the heck is that? What is that? What are we, barbarians? It's 
Go back to the psalmist. When you look at Psalm 11, Psalm 11 and, and, and verse 5. It says, the Lord tests the righteous. He continues to ask us to be righteous people. But listen to this. Not me. Listen to this. But his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Now, I know that many of you will say the word hate is a very strong word. Yes, it is. And it's in your Bible. God hates the wicked. Okay? And by the way, it takes a lot to be wicked. Some people that, 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 that we see do bad things, little things here, little things, they're not even, those are not considered wicked. Wicked are people who indulge in wickedness, in violence. They premeditated. They, you know, they get off on it. God hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Listen to the wording. The one who loves violence. We got people out there. People say, how could all this be happening? Because we got people who get off on committing violent acts. You believe that? Like it's fun for some of these young kids that are doing it. Like they literally say, can't wait for the sun to go down so that they can go do what they have to do. Oh, let me just go and shoot up a group of people as, as, as it happened in Buffalo, just because uh, they are different in, the, in terms of their skin color or perhaps in other places because of their religious beliefs or in other places because of their gender and their identity. God's not happy. God's not happy. And, and, and if we are true followers of God, if we are true followers of Jesus Christ as Christians, then we should not be happy either. And yes, we must pray, but we must also do what we can in our communities to fight back. Whether it's, it's you going to your uh, clergy council meeting, whether it's you going to your uh, community council meeting, and finding out what is going on and what is being done, if it's you having to vote the right people in and vote the wrong people out, whatever it is you have to do, I'm not telling you to go and commit violent acts. I am telling you to use your powers of persuasion to help. And, 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 and I'll be honest, like I preached before, you have my total permission as your spiritual leader to defend yourselves as well, if it comes to that. We got, we got kids out there, we got people out there that are envious of people that commit violence. They go and they'll watch, you know, movies and Scarface and uh, New Jack City and, and, and what more. There's a bunch of them out there. They, they watch any movie that is violent and they'll watch it over and over and over because they love it. It's not even about entertainment, right? It's about literally them looking at these movies because they want to be like these guys. Proverbs, one of the greatest kings of Israel, Solomon, wrote in Proverbs 3.31, do not envy a man of violence and do not choose any of his ways. Not me talking. It's God speaking. I'm just a voice box. It's God telling not only you, but for you to go and pass on the message and let people know, don't look up to people that commit violence. You can look up to Al Capone or El Chapo or, uh, or, or, or you know, Flacco from 141st Street. You know, don't, don't, don't look up to. Let's 
let's pray and let's help bring them down. Either come to the Lord or go down to Sheol. Those are your choices because they ain't got no other choice. We're going to have to get to a place where we're praying people off our streets. Literally, we're praying people off our, the prayer is going to have to change. God, have mercy on them if that's what you can do or just get rid of them, but we want them off our streets. We want our streets back. Reminds me of the story of when Jesus went into the temple and he realized that they were using the temple for everything else but praising God, <laughs> you know? And he started tossing tables left and right and, 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 and just telling them, this is my father's house and you've turned it into a den of thieves. This is what they've done to our streets. And, and, and the sad part is that we have still have people out there, politicians included, people that are not willing to make changes because they may lose the election. I'll say it again. They are not thinking about the people that are dying or, 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 or the people. They are thinking about being reelected. And so they don't make the right decisions because the right decision in their little area district may cause them to lose the election. I say lose the election and do what is right. Stop taking money from all these organizations that are pro. Uh, 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 and, and I'm not talking about uh, Second Amendment. I have no problem with our Second Amendment. I have a problem with people taking our Second Amendment to levels of destruction. where you can have a kid who can't even go to a bar, a kid who cannot even drink alcohol, a kid who can't do certain things that are pretty commonplace, but they can go ahead and get some sort of an assault weapon on their birthday and then use it in the fashion that they use. The Bible talks about mammon, the love of money. And this is the problem that we're having at the highest of levels, the love of money. There's money exchanging hands all over the place and they are forgetting us. They are forgetting the people. And I know we have a difference of opinion. I understand all that. I know that people in, in, in Texas or in mid, middle America are a lot different than us up here in, North, in the Northeast. And I understand that. But I know one thing we do have in common. We don't want our kids to die. I know one thing we have in common, whether you're a gun owner or not a gun owner, or yet we don't want our children to die. We don't want people to be killed for no reason at all because of gang initiations. We had a president before this one who was being censored all over social media. Some of you may, 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 may remember this. Being censored all over social media, and I was fine with that. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. But how is it that that, that, that was going on but we still have videos of young people rapping about how they're gonna shoot themselves up or rapping and they have guns in their hands and rapping and have, why, why, how, what's going on here? Were we just going after this particular person for political reasons? Or, or, or do we really want negativity off, our, off of our wavelengths? We need to really make up our minds. Take them off. Take them off. Look, they take me off for playing Christian music on Facebook. But you can't take off the guy who's, who's dancing to some music with a gun on the left hand and a wad of cash on the right. And even worse, 
and it worse, a gun on the left hand, the water cash on the right, talking about how they're, he's going to murder somebody and wearing a crucifix. What the heck is that all about? What the heck is that all about? Enough is enough. I'll finish with this. Titus, in the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 2. To speak evil of no one. Okay. This is really what God is expecting of his creation. I don't care what religion you're from. I don't care about the color of your skin. I don't care about your gender identity. I don't care about your sexual preference. I don't care. This is what I care about, the word of God. The word of God says to speak evil of no one. To avoid quarreling. To be gentle. And to show perfect courtesy toward all people. This is the Bible. This is the word of God, but I don't think that many people actually, even people who who believe in Jesus and believe, I'm not even sure they believe the word of God is all true. I said it. I said it. This is the kind of community that our Lord wants. One that speaks with people that speak uh, no evil of anyone. People who avoid, do everything in their power to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. There is a great individual, Professor Thomas Sowell. You can look him up. Sowell, S-O-W-E-L-L. -L. He's on YouTube. He's probably in his 90s now, but I've been studying his books and his speeches since my college days. And he, you know what he said? And I'll make it quick. He said, the only thing that's really missing in our society is common decency. We are failing to be decent people. And you know what's interesting? I go to scripture and I find a verse like this in Titus where it says, show perfect courtesy to all people. And that's when I know that the individual is speaking truth to power. Because you know me, I double check everybody with scripture. If you ain't on scripture, you ain't with me. So, so, so you hear somebody, right? And even though you have a lot of respect for them, I still double check. He said, all we need in our society is common decency. We are lacking decency. These young people today, have no decency whatsoever. They do not show respect to anybody, let alone courtesy. And then you go to Titus and you read, show perfect courtesy toward all people is what God mandates of us. Now, I am not saying that we need to stoop down to their levels. But I am saying that we must remain steadfast in the word of God. And we must start to work within our communities. Clergy must continue to work with law enforcement and law enforcement and clergy together with community. We must continue to put pressure so that we can get these individuals off the street, but keep them off the street. Whatever it takes, we need to protect each other. God bless you, God keep you, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
forever and ever. Amen. Good seeing each and every one of you. This message, as well as others, can be found on my YouTube channel on Rev. Dr. Marcos Miranda. If you need to get in touch with me, uh, even about topics that you'd like to see me cover, you can do that at actioninchrist at gmail.com, or you guys that are in the church can, can, that can put it there. Um, if you wish to continue to support the ministry, you can do so at actioninchrist.com. Aside from that, um, it's a little cloudy today. Here it is, but it is a beautiful day, the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in this. And be glad in it. God bless you. God keep you. And I will see you soon. Amen. 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 May we enjoy this beach view. Amen, guys. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, guys. Bye, Bye, everybody. everybody. Have Thank a good you. afternoon, everybody. Bye. Have a blessed afternoon. Have a blessed Sunday. Bless you, Reverend Marcus, and all my church family.